you know, out of all the bikes I have ridden and owned, the KLX250 continues to be my favorite as far as comfort and personal fitment. And what I mean by personal fitment, I mean how well it feels underneath you, off-road, the ergonomics, just the way the engine revs up, how nimble it feels for a 300 pound bike off-road, and to be honest, the forks are not even that bad. On top of that, it is the perfect bike in terms of maintenance. Oh, I'm already seeing people hitting these KLX250 with 50k miles on a stock top end. See if I go back to it. That was weird. I'm curious what this is. What is that? Why should be like some weird ass? It's just so dark I can't even see inside. It the clown, are you in there? That gives me the creeps, I don't know why. It's just freaking creepy. <laughs> Dang, why does it have to be so underpowered? Which brings me to my very first thing. Why is this KLX250 so perfect in every way, but yet so tough? I honestly think if this KLX250 was a KLX350, and still kept its linear delivery, this will be the perfect true dual sport. Not only that, it could also be the perfect light adventure bike many of us seek. See, this KLX250 is extremely comfortable in its stock form, and to me it's not buzzy whatsoever. And the only buzz I feel is from me revving the heck out of it of the, out of the engine just to keep it 65 miles an hour. Now imagine if this KLX250 can easily cruise at 80 miles an hour. I'm just cruising around, seeing how the snow is. do not look too bad. So, what about the second thing? Yeah, let's bring out the uh, forks. Yep, outdated forks. See, don't get me wrong, these forks are really good for being basic. They feel great and honestly feel like an enduro bike setup, just straight out the showroom. They are nice and plush and has large amount of travel, yet does awesome on the street. But imagine if the forks, you know, were a bit more customizable. This will definitely add on to the value of off-road, and will bring dual sport riding to, you know, a new level. Well, at least for the KLX250. Just wish there were, you know, better options for dampening and rebound off these forks. Alright, so hear me out guys, what I'm going to say next might cause a bit of controversy, but in all honesty, I hate this dual sport because it does not have a selectable ABS. Now don't get me wrong, I don't hate the bike, I love the bike. I know I threw out something different, but hear me out, we're talking about selectable. See, I have ABS on my CB500X and I truly love how safe I feel on this bike. To be honest, it actually saved me once in the rain when a car was making a left on me. We all know wet rows and left turners never mix. So if we truly use, let's say, the KLX350 for its true intent, which is to do some light adventure riding, hop on the roads at 70 miles an hour, and yet have that perfect off-road feel, ABS would really be a huge added safety feature while hitting the highways and street. <laughs> Dude, this trail, I don't know how long it goes for, but it looks pretty awesome. So, most of us will probably call this the unicorn bike. It will exactly. never exist, which I might agree with you. See, I personally think the KLX250 is just one step closer to being that unicorn bike. I can deal with the weight, it's great for on-road use, and somehow feel incredibly nimble on the trails. Keep the force if they will, it's actually not that bad. But this KLX250 is not that far from being the perfect dual sport. I mean, the low sight seat height is incredibly user friendly, its linear power delivery is very easy to control for enduro riding, and not scary snappy, like the good performance dirt bikes are. Just 
Put a DRZ400 engine in it, and but keep its ergonomics and comfort with some selectable ABS and call us good. Well guys, call us a rant, a wish, or a stupid request, but I am sure we all have a specific bike and wants we would love to fill in our bike world. So go ahead and share your thoughts, subscribe, and hit that bell button to catch my other videos.